All right, you are here because you either purchased some unfinished dice from Firebolt Dice, or maybe you just want to learn how to sand, polish, and ink dice. Whatever your reason, welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic day. That's not my actual accent, but we're probably going to do a few accents as we go through this, so just buckle up. Um, all right, so first thing I'm going to do is show you what a die looks like fresh out of the mold. It's got this little topper on it that's called a sprue, um, and that's where I pour in the resin. So here's an example of a mold. It's got that hole up top. I pour the resin in there, and then it's got these cuts that make it so that I can pop her on out. She looks like this. So what we're gonna have to focus on finishing is this corner where this pour spout was. Um, and then there might also be some rough edges where those cuts were, any resin leaked into the cuts. But then depending on what your dye is made of, uh, it could have had some rough spots elsewhere. For example, this um, iridescent stuff that I use in here can sometimes press against the outsides of the molds. Um, or if you look at this 15 face, it's got some imperfections on it that I'll probably want to sand away. Um, so while what we'll mainly have to focus on is this corner where the pore spout was, I will have cut off the pore spout for you, you will want to take a look at the other faces of your mold. Just see if there's any others that you want to clean up. So I'm going to be working with this chonky D20 just because it's easier to see for filming purposes. Um, it's quite a bit larger than a regular D20. Um, all right, so let's go over what you need. First, you need a smooth, flat surface that does not absorb water. So I bought a bunch of these acrylic uh, clipboards, and that's what I use. Um, people also use glass or uh, mirrors or something, but I use these acrylic keyboards. You want to make sure it's a totally smooth, flat surface. Um, so, because if you are sanding and polishing your dice on a surface that is not smooth, you're going to end up with dice that are not smooth and you'll be sad. Um, you will also need a polishing kit. I sell these on my website or you can have your own polishing supplies. I use uh, 600 grit sandpaper and then all six levels of polishing papers. You can look for polishing papers if you don't have any of your own. Um, you're going to want water and you're going to want gloves. You're going to want these for the same reason. One is that when the dice have hardened, they are totally safe to, to touch and to hold, not to eat. Don't eat them, please. Um, however, when you start sanding and you start making dust, that dust can get onto your hands and can absorb into your skin, and it can cause an allergic reaction. Like most allergic reactions, it doesn't happen to everybody. But also, like most allergic reactions, sometimes you don't know when it's going to happen, and it's really not fun when it does. So, you're going to want to wear gloves to protect your hands from the dust, and you're going to want to use water, because water is going to keep the dust down. Um, it'll weight it down so it doesn't fly up into your face. It will also extend the life of your sandpaper and polishing papers. If you wet sand and wet polish, your papers will last quite a bit longer. These papers will definitely last through two sets, if you use them appropriately, two full seven-piece sets. Um, and longer if you're even more careful. So that's my recommendation. And now I'm going to put on the gloves. I am wearing the gloves. Let's look at what's in the polishing kit. So... First, we have this 600 grit sandpaper, and then we have these polishing papers, uh, which go in order, green, gray, blue, pink, light blue, and white. Now, with most of the colors, it's really easy to tell which side is the correct side, because the other side is a lot paler. So if you look at that, and that's true of of all of them, the other side is paler. However, the only time that's not true is the white sheet. It's white on both sides. So I've done you a solid and put an X 
on the side you should not use. It's also got a little bit of a shine to it that the correct side does not have. But the X is on the side you should not use. Don't do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sandpaper. I'm just going to put some water on the edge. And all I'm going to focus on right now is this rough corner. And I'm going to place it so that just the corner is on the sandpaper. I'm just going to wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Now the reason why I'm doing just the corner is because if I put it all right here, what that does is it puts the pressure on this corner and these two corners. But since this corner is raised, it doesn't put any pressure on the face. So if you go like this and just start going, you're going to wear down these two corners and you're going to throw off the geometry of your dice. Don't do it. So I'm just going to put it up at the top that has that excess rough bit. And I'm just going to move it back and forth and every so often I'm going to check it with my finger. And when I no longer feel a difference, when I can slide my finger up without feeling a difference when I hit that corner, that's when I'm done. If you have any edges that are particularly rough, you'll do the same thing but putting the edge on there. Again, you want to be really careful not to go too far and throw off the geometry of your dice. All right. So now I've done it so that I don't really have that excess material here. You're going to want to look all around the dice for excess material. If your die had a bubble in it somewhere that was small enough to fix, I will have filled it in with a little bit of resin and so it might be uneven. Those bubbles usually appear on one of these top faces anyway, but sometimes they don't. And sometimes, like I said, the foil may have pressed against a surface, making it rough. So you'll just want to do a sweep of your die to see if there's anything particularly rough that needs the sandpaper. But typically there isn't. Um, the only things that are really rough is this poor corner. So, and you can see that it's left like a rough spot up at the top. The bottom of the face is shiny and the top of the face is rough. Here's where we're gonna take care of that. We're gonna move on to the polishing papers. Green polishing paper. Throw some water on there. Now the green polishing paper is a lot like sandpaper. Um, it's very abrasive. And if you go at it too much, you will wear down, you will take material off your die. And so you can throw off your corners if you do it too much. So you don't need to use the green paper a lot. The goal of the green paper is to make sure that this face is now totally flat. Because we've sanded this to where it feels like it's totally flat with the bottom. Now we're going to be certain that it is by going on this green paper. And you want to be kind of erratic and random in your movements, because if you do perfect circles all the time, you can actually end up sanding a circular shape into your dice. So I kind of go for like this crazy figure eight thing. And then, what you've done is you've made the whole face matte instead of just the top corner. And that lets me know, okay, this whole face is at one level. So I'm just gonna give that a little bit more. And I'm gonna do that to every single face now. Every single face that this corner touched. You shouldn't have to touch any of these other faces unless they had an imperfection, which remember my 15 did. So I am gonna do the 15 as well. So now I've gone through on every face and they are all equally dull, <laughs> uniformly dull. Some of them are still a little shiny, that's just because they're wet. And I also did it on the 15 face because it had some imperfections as well. And we're just going to do that same thing going through each one of the papers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give the 15 face just a little bit more, is I'm going to leave the 15 face as having just been the green. And I will go through all the other faces with every color so you can see 
what the effect is. So now I've moved on to gray. All right, so not a big difference. If we're looking at the 15 and the five. Uh, you really won't notice a difference for a couple sh sheets of the paper. So let's move on to blue. By the time you've gotten to blue, you don't really have to worry about doing it too much um, because now these aren't coarse enough to really sand off material. Um, Gray and green, you're going to want to be careful that you don't accidentally over sand and flatten your faces too much. But by the time you get to blue, you're good. All right, so again, it's still kind of hard to tell. You can maybe tell five is a little bit shinier, but it's definitely still not as shiny as like these guys. So on to pink. Take a look now. So there's 15 and there's five. Definitely getting some more clarity there. 15's very matte, five's got to shine. And then this is where I think the magic really happens. When we move on to this light blue, this is where things get good. So there you've got 15, and now there we've got five. Look at that. 15's never going to have that clarity. Woo! And believe it or not, we're actually not done. Um, you can see there's a little mark right here that shows that I probably could have sanded a little bit more back on step one. Um, and you can always go back. And you do want to make sure you go through every single step, though. So if you go back to sandpaper, you're gonna to need to start back at green, gray, blue, pink, light blue. Um, you don't wanna skip any steps because that's gonna throw off your groove. Uh, and you'll end up with scratches that won't come out. So don't skip, make sure you do every single step. But before we do the final step, the white paper, I actually do something first. I will show you after I bring 15 back up to snuff. All right, 15 is now as shiny as its brethren. Um, one thing I'll do at this point is I'll go and I'll look at all the corners and I'll see if there are any corners that um, are off or need more sanding uh, because sometimes the, the corners just won't be perfect and they might not be perfect even on a place you didn't sand. They should be pretty close because I try, but I'll just go and see if there are any other corners that need a little love. If not, now is when I actually move on to painting. Now I am a very chaotic dice painter. Um, what I'm gonna do is I just use acrylic paint and I just use the lid like a palette. Um, and there are some dice painters who are like fine miniature painters and they print they, they paint with a lot of detail. I am not one of those. This is my very scientific painting method. Oh, and if you have like a dust or something trapped in your numbers after sanding, you can take an old toothbrush and scrub that out. So this is my super scientific painting method. Ready? I put paint on the paintbrush and then I just slather it. <laughs> it's so graceful. And I do five sides at a time. And I just make sure the paint gets down in there. And then, after I've done my five sides, 
I got this paper towel. I just whoop, 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 whoop. But then they're still kind of ugly. There's a lot of excess paint. Don't worry, we'll get to that. All right, so now I've got the whole thing painted and there's, it's not cute. It's not cute. There's a lot of excess gook, um, but don't worry. We're gonna make it cute, but first I'm gonna let this dry. You're gonna wanna make sure that all of the excess is in a really thin layer um, because this next trick that we're gonna do is only gonna work if there's just like a thin layer of excess paint on the faces. So I'm gonna leave this here to dry and I'll be back in a second. Okay, we are back. It is dry. And here's where this white paper is going to come into play. So, you spend all that time polishing, and then you ink it, and you've got all this excess ink. At least if you're a chaotic inker like me. And what some people will do is they'll take like an alcohol wipe or something and rub that across. Or Windex, or just water. Um, but I found that you can kill two birds with one stone because you can do your final polish and this is just abrasive enough to remove the excess ink and it'll make it so that all of your faces will have a nice uniform polish because you, you will have gone over all of them uh, to get off the excess ink or paint. So I'm going to get my water on. Um, I'm not wearing gloves at this point. The white paper really doesn't produce dust or particles. If you're still worried about it though, I do encourage you to still wear gloves. So I'm just gonna like, let's pick a face. Here's the 15 face. You can see it's got a lot of excess ink on it. I'm just gonna give it a swirl on here. On the white paper, I'm not so worried about going in circles since it's the last one. Dry it off. No more excess paint on the 15 face. And I'm just going to go on every single one. You may notice um, if there are faces that you haven't gone through all the papers for before, it could feel a little bit rougher on the paper. Um, and if you aren't careful, you can end up destroying your white paper um, if your faces are too rough. They shouldn't be too rough, but they might be. Um, if that happens and you notice that you're really wearing out the white paper quickly, I'd recommend going over first with the blue, with the light blue, and then come back to the white. But I'm just gonna give all of these a go. And there she is. There he is. Long may he reign. Um, one thing that I like also about going over all the faces is it lets you give every face a good look. Um, for example, right here on the 15 face, I'm noticing that there's a small flaw right there. Um, that's something I probably wouldn't notice on just a cursory inspection. Um, and so that is also part of the risk of buying unfinished dice for me, is while I have looked over all of them to make sure there aren't any huge flaws, um, you could be buying dice with small flaws that I haven't noticed because I haven't gone through the whole polishing process. And the polishing process is typically where I catch the flaws and decide if a set is A grade or B grade. But that is the polishing, polishing process. Real quick, I will show you a full set so we can look at where those sprue corners are on each one. On the D10, D100, and D8, 
The sprue corner is on the vertex that connects all of the odd numbered sides, or in the case of the D100, they're not actually odd numbers technically because they're all multiples of 10, but one, three, five, seven, nine, one, three, five, seven. So that's where the corner is on the D10, D100, and D8. Um, on the D4, it's actually just on this top corner, so it doesn't directly touch any of the numbers. Um, on the D12, this one I've already sanded, but it's where the 6, 3, and 5 meet. Right there. Um, on the D6, it's a little different because uh, it's right here on one of these faceted corners. Um, so it's not actually on any of the faces directly, but the roughness on the edges usually means that I like to sand down these faces anyway. And then finally, the D20. If you find the Firebolt logo, the rough corner is directly above it. All right, so there you go. Good luck polishing, and I hope you enjoy your shiny new dice.